Hello, everybody. Today, I'm going to go through the character creation process for Basic Fantasy. So let's get started. So, player characters. How to create a player character. So the first thing we'll need, well, we'll need a character sheet, which we've got here. Then we need to actually roll our stats. And just like D&D, there are the six stats. Strength, intelligence, wisdom, dexterity, constitution, and charisma. Now, here in Basic Fantasy, it mentions 3d6 for each ability score. So roll 3d6, as described in the character ability section, and write the result after the names of the abilities. Write down the scores in the order you roll them. If you are unhappy with the scores you have rolled, ask your GM for advice. As, she, as he or she may allow some form of point or score exchanging. Well, actually, I am the DM, so I'm going to go ahead and make it how I did for my players. And uh, it's quite generous, but you roll four six-siders, remove the lowest one, and then you write them all down. You roll that six times, write them down, and then place them where you like. So let's start out here. Here we go. So first things first, we have a four, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we move obviously one of the threes and we get an eleven. So I just write that off to the side here. Roll number two. So we have to do this six times. So we have eleven, we have fifteen. Remove the one. Number three, we have eleven, fifteen again. Again, 15 again, 4, ooh, 16, and then one last time, we have, wow, 17, all right, really good, very good stats, excellent actually, way above average, so let's put this, put these where we want, um, now, I'm probably going to end up using this character in a solo adventure, one of the D&D &D solo modules from the, from the 80s. So what character would I like to create for that? Now, I believe one of them I have is actually made specifically for a thief. But we are going step by step in the character creation. So the first thing is first is that we've rolled our stats. Now, the second thing we're supposed to do do is choose our race and the options for races are we can do a dwarf it can be an elf a halfling or a human so let's just read what it says here choose a race and class for your character your character must meet the prime requisite minimum for a class as described in the character classes section in order to be a member of that class also note that there are minimum and maximum ability requirements for the various races which must be met as described in the character races section. So I, well, my stats are quite exceptional though. Uh, I only have to worry about probably maximums for a couple of them. Like for example here, it looks like dwarves have to have a minimum of constitution of nine. Uh, they may not have a charisma higher than 17. But I think I might just go with a human. Good old-fashioned human. So race, we'll write that down here, human. Now, what class do I want to be? Now, humans can be any class, I believe. There's also combination classes as well. You could, I could become a fighter magic user. I could also be a magic user thief. But I think I'm going to be... I think we're going to be a thief. Okay, so we wrote down race human, class thief. Now, where to put our stats? So let's put, well, the highest, the 17. We'll put that on dexterity. That's the primary stat for a thief. Then we will put 16 under, put 16 under strength. And then 15 for constitution. Another 15 
under charisma, or sorry, intelligence. Another 15 under wisdom, and the 11 will go under charisma. Now, the bonuses or penalties for those stats, those are, I believe all of them except for the 11 are actual bonuses or penalties, but if we go here, you can see that the ability score of 16 is a plus two bonus. Intelligence is 15, that is a plus one. Wisdom is 15 plus one. Constitution, 15 plus one. Charisma 11 is no bonus. And then a dexterity of 17 is plus two. Now, I also let my players, they can raise a stat by one, but they have to lower another stat by two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to lower uh, Charisma 9 is still a no bonus. So I'm gonna lower Charisma to 9, and then that will make my Dexterity an 18. And that gives now a Dexterity of plus three. Exceptional, outstanding. So we wrote down all our abilities and their bonuses. We are instructed now to write down the special abilities of your race and class. So let's do that. So here we have a human. Special abilities. Humans learn unusually quickly, gaining a bonus of 10% to all experience points earned. So I will write that down here. 10% increase for XP. Okay, then let's go to our thief. Now, basic fantasy uses the percentile system, just like the original basic Dungeons and Dragons. So we are level one. Put that there. And then now for thief abilities, we have Open locks down here. So level one, we have a 25% chance. Find remove traps, we have a 20% chance. Pick pockets, 30%. Move silently, 25. Climb walls, 80. Hide, 10. And listen, 30. And we've marked that all down here on the character sheet. All right, now that we've completed the skills for our character, our thief, it, we're instructed to do the rolling for, roll the hit die appropriate for your class, adding your constitution bonus or penalty. And note the result as your hit points on your character sheet. So, now what I like to do, another house roll, is I always give a first level character the maximum hit points. So in this case, a thief rolls a, I believe it's a D6. Character classes, a thief. Nine or higher, first level. So yes, uh, no, sorry, a thief is a D4. A thief uses a D4. So that means we have a constitution bonus of plus one. So four, five, so five hit points is what this thief starts out with. All right, so we have all our abilities done. We have our race, we have our class, thief, special skills and abilities, because we're human, we get 10% increase uh, for XP. Then we have our hit points, as indicated here, five, because we roll a D4, but we get plus one because of our constitution. So each subsequent level, we roll a D4, whenever we gained a level. So now we go to our next set of instructions here, and it says to roll for your starting money. Generally, your character will start with 3d6 times 10 gold pieces, but ask the game master before rolling. Well, I am the game master, and I follow that exact step. 3d6 times 10, so let's do that. Six, one, and one, eight times 10, 80 gold. Let's write that down here, 80 gold pieces. 
let's go shopping. So we have determined our thief has 80 gold pieces. Now, what we can do is we go to the very next section after here. And this is the cost of weapon and equipment. But I did purchase the basic fantasy equipment emporium book. So we can use this in place of what's in the core book. So let's see what options we have. All right, and here we are. We have melee weapons. So let's start with weapons. So, well, we should probably buy a dagger. Now there's some unique daggers here, a defending dagger, a silver dagger. But what we'll do is we will get a sword as well. Now a long sword is 10 gold pieces, so I think I'm gonna get a long sword. And then that damage is 1d8. Oh, a long sword is a medium weapon. And that's going to cost 10 gold pieces. I'll write that at the bottom here. Keep track. So we have 70 bucks left. Now we will also buy. Well, missile weapons. Now, a short bow is 50 gold. That's gonna drain a lot of our money. And then we have some other options here. Short bow, short bow, short bow, short bow arrow, one silver piece. Okay, so we're gonna want that. So let's get a short bow. A short bow is $50, so that leaves us with 20 gold left. I'll write down short bow here. And the short bow does, well, I think it's mostly based off the arrows, but we look here, short bow, 25 gold. Oh, my mistake, that was the range. Okay, my mistake, my mistake. Let's go back. Short bow is 25 gold, even better. So we've spent $35. Now we have a short bow. One, uh, one silver piece will get us an arrow. So let us get, it's 10 silver pieces for one gold. So we will get 20 arrows for two gold. So we put that equipment, I'll put 20 in brackets. arrows right down there 20 arrows and that does one d six points of damage i believe let's check it out mm -mm. Yeah, right there one d6 of course so, 1d6. So now we've taken care of weapons mostly, I believe. I'll consider maybe a... It's good to have a dagger maybe on hand too. Okay, I'll get a dagger as well. So I'll write down dagger right here as well. And a dagger is two gold pieces. That is a small weapon. The short bow, my mistake. That was also small, I believe. And that does the dagger does 1d4 damage. And that cost me two gold. So 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. So we've spent 39 gold so far. So there's 41 gold remaining. Now the next thing to make sure we cover is armor. So should we buy some 41 gold remaining? We could buy studded leather and that would give us a 14 armor class. With basic fantasy, it's not uh, Thaco. It's higher the armor class, the better. That's the number you actually need uh, to hit this character if I bought studded leather, 14 or higher. Or I could buy leather for 20 gold. 
you know, I don't think I'm gonna need a, provisions aren't typically that expensive. So I think I could get away with buying studded leather for 30 gold. Well, that's right, that's right down studded leather. So what do we have here? Studded leather. So let's write that here. Armor type studded. Leather. Studded leather. Weight is 25. Here's a 25. So 30 gold. And that makes our armor class 14. Armor class is 14. But because of our dexterity bonus, plus 3, 15, 16, 17 is this character's armor class. Not too bad. And that cost us 30 gold. All right, we are down to 11 gold. And now we're at general equipment. So we want to be able to carry our gold. So let's get some sacks or a backpack. So we have journal, map, lots of stuff in this equipment emporium. It's a good little book actually. It just expands on a lot of the general equipment that's in the main book. So let's see what we have here. Items, rope, silk, 10 bucks, too pricey. Outdoor tents. Well, I'm a human, so I don't have improvision or anything. Ooh, thief's tools and picks, 25 gold. <laughs> ah. All right, I had to make a few adjustments here. We didn't really have the cash. So I had to change the armor to leather. That saved us 10 bucks. Then I reduced the long sword to a short sword. So I gave myself my money back. But the short sword was a gift. It was actually, uh, my father was a blacksmith and he, uh, and I had that before. So I didn't have to actually buy that. My backstory. So I'm gonna squeeze that in. Uh, now, I also had to adjust no, that was everything. So the armor, I lowered the long sword to a short sword. And now have, so I now have 29 gold remaining, which would allow us now to buy the thieves tools for 25 gold. And then we have four gold remaining. So four gold, we will take a look here and we need something to carry all our loot. Definitely. So you can see here the general equipment in this book. There's just so much, so many different options. It's got some classic ones in here, grappling hook. You can buy a hammock, a lantern, oh, torches. I'm gonna need some torches too. Those are cheap. Anyhow, so now we're gonna go to bags and pouches and we are going to get a adventurer's backpack for four gold pieces so that leaves us with zero gold so we'll have a backpack and because my dm is just so nice he's going to give me four torches because I'm such, just such a kind DM. Anyhow, so now we have to complete, let's go back to the main book and check out what we need to do next here. So because of the armor change, we went from, we got had to get rid of the studs. We have just leather. The armor class was 13 base as opposed to the 14 we had with studded leather. So therefore the 13 plus the three dexterity bonus, the armor class is now 16. What are we supposed to do next now? 
So we now look up our character's attack bonus from the table in the encounter section. So let's take a look. I'm gonna quickly note too, just as we're passing by it here, the thief for second level, we need 1,250 experience. So I'm going to write that down here. Experience needed, 1,250. So in the encounter section, where is the encounter section? Let's take a look here. The encounters. Here we are, encounter attack bonus table. So we are a thief, thief level one, attack bonus is plus one. So let's write that down. Attack bonus plus one. Bonus plus one. Now because of our strength bonus, we get a plus two on top of that. So it would be plus three for our current melee bonus. And now for missile bonus, when firing the bow, it will be plus one, a uh, one plus three. So it's actually plus four when firing a bow. Very good. All right, now that we've completed that portion, the attack modifiers, we have to go to, we are told here, also look up your saving throws. And that's also the encounter section. I've bookmarked it right here. So saving throws for a thief, which are right down here, level one. So death ray or poison is 13. So on a 20 sider, in order to succeed at a saving throw involving death ray or poison, have to roll a 13 or higher. When being attacked by a magic wand, be 14 or higher. Paralysis or petrify, 13. Being attacked by dragon's breath to take probably half damage or so. Roll a 16 or higher. Oof, not very good. That's a tough one. And then spells, whenever a spell is being cast and there's a saving throw opportunity, I need a 15 or higher on a d20. So there we go. Now we have our saving throws completed. Let's go back and check for the next step. Now, because of my intelligence being a plus one, I get the language of common, which every character gets, but you also get an additional language for each uh, modifier bonus you have. So for a 15 with a plus one, I get to choose an additional language. So the language I will choose, I'll take elf, and I'll fit that into my backstory somehow. All right, sound the trumpets. Introducing Psy, Ringworm, human thief, height 5'8", weight 160 pounds, hair black, eyes green. So there you have it. That's generally, that's well, that's creating a character really for basic fantasy, uh, to make a thief anyways. Very simple, very straightforward. Didn't take very long at all, really. This is, even though I do DM a campaign for basic fantasy, this is actually my first time creating a character for basic fantasy. But what I am hoping to do is I do have a couple of published adventures that were for the basic Dungeons and Dragons. They're from back in the 80s and maybe early 90s. And what I'll do is I'll take uh, Mr. Ringworm here through one or two of them. We'll see how it goes. Even though this is a basic fantasy character, it is still pretty much exactly the same as making a basic a basic character, basic Dungeons and Dragons character, except for, of course, the in basic fantasy, there is the separation between all the races and all the classes. But uh, I'm looking forward to giving it a shot so we can see how uh, Psy does and how well, how compatible it would be with a basic Dungeons and Dragons module. And that would also be my first time playing one of those solo adventure modules as well. So I'm hoping to get to that at some time in the future. So if you have any questions, uh, comments, please leave them below. Thank you for watching and take care everybody. Bye-bye for now.